you are listening to itrboxing.com radio with your host lukey what's it gonna look like um i mean i think i think boxing is pretty resilient i think it's gonna pick back up where you know where it started from actually it's gonna it's really going to determine who's stayed motivated. <clears throat> you talking about just boxers or boxers and coaches, because there's still a lot of people that are training that I see, you know, um, I mean, you've seen the, the quote before, like, you can't say that you didn't have time. It's just like your determination, whether you are disciplined or not. So this time right now is like the perfect time for everyone to like sit down and figure out exactly what they're going to do and like rehash a new plan. Like this goes for businesses and everything, you know, like you see, um, I think I get emails every day from um, top rank and they're saying like, Hey, we're showing iconic trilogy. Like, you know, I don't know if you get top ranks emails, but oh, they we're going to show Evan corn sends them all the time to my email. Like yeah. It's like it's a... pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I mean, fans can even sign up for this as well, too, to get these emails about watching, you know, this is what's going to happen at 12 p.m., Ali versus Foreman, uh, 1 p.m., Holyfield versus Foreman. Like, it's pretty cool. Like, they're showing all these classic box. So, you know, they're still having fights that are going on. So, uh, Top Rank and ESPN, they've adjusted pretty well. I think it's just really going to show who's adjusting, you know, um, right now. We were just talking earlier because uh, the corona about the coronaviruses and you know it really shows like what is essential and who's gonna you know take flight during this time and who's gonna think it's like a single sale right now so it's pretty interesting times so, yeah yeah I'm I'm just watching some boxers train in the middle of the street doing like a CrossFit workout yeah. So. There's so much you could do, like even social media, like there's so much as boxers that you can do. Like right now I'm even for myself, like, okay. I wrote down, have you heard of like a vision board? Yeah. Okay. So I did a vision board, but I did it in like all different areas of my life. So finances, like uh, self-love, boxing, books to read, fitness matters, business matters, and like family matters. And then you write down everything that you want. But, like, for me, I wrote down, like, a business plan for mine and, like, Instagram, how many posts I'll be doing a week, Twitter, TikTok, like, Snapchat, my website, like, getting podcasts and articles out and stuff like that. So, it's, like, you can – right now is a good time to, like, okay, write down a map and then just start executing, you know, and you find ways to adjust. The same thing in life, like, you know, right now it's, like, life. Okay, how can we figure out how to adjust in life? Same thing with boxing. Top ranks figured it out. ESPN figured it out. Some of these boxers figured it out. They're not just sitting at home, not training. They're adjusting, you know. Now you got to know. So I, I think people... boxers and boxing, this sport will be pretty resilient. That's my answer to your question. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people say that we're sometimes uh, my show is top rank biased. So I was going to just warn you oh, off, the wolves off, might come out. Well, no, they say. That's what people think? Oh shit, we're gonna. You're dropping the f bomb. Okay, I get. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Saying. I said I said the s word. I didn't say the f. I just, I mean, I just pulled up Top Rank because they just they're staying on top of their stuff. Top Rank right now and ESPN. I don't care if people think it's biased or not. Like it is what it is. That's what you're talking about. That's like me talking about. Let's just talk about. Um, nutrition and people would be like you know oh well you're biased against alcohol and like all these other things it's like no it's just i'm just talking about nutrition like what does it matter it doesn't matter but um as a me i think they're maybe they might think like because you know you're a media you should be unbiased you should be talking about everything but what if you only want to talk about top rank and people will know okay if i want to get information on top rank and all top rank fighters i go to Luki. like you know essentially the same thing <clears throat> i i get what you're saying but i feel like people just say it because like i have relationships with fighters like teofimo lopez or certain fighters out there who are with top rank and just because i've worked yeah. hard to facilitate relationships with these fighters and to know them mm-hmm. over time people will just right. easily say oh you're you're Bias catering to top rank fighting. when mm-hmm. it's like well, I've worked my butt off to know these fighters and to watch them grow from the ground up, you know, and I think that's something I take pride in personally 
is whether yeah. it's like Andy Vences, Gabriel Flores Jr., Teofimo Lopez. There's a lot of content I did on these fighters when there weren't a lot of people filming these fighters. And right. it's it's going to be historical documents for the rest of their career. Like when they make documentaries about these fighters, if they ever do, the footage I took of them at some point of their career is historical footage. Right. And I mean, that's what I take the most pride in my involvement in boxing. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. I mean, I don't think it's really a soapbox that you're on. It's, it's just, I get what you mean. I see your side, like, yeah, I've grown with them and I've seen them from literally from the bottom up. Cause I've seen so many fighters that it's, it's really awesome to like see them when they first start off and then to see how they grow into boxing. But as like, a, on the other hand, like as a media, like for me, when I write in the media, if there's somebody that I know that you blatantly see them lose, you have to write about the fight, you know? So I think that's what they, they might be coming at it. Like you can't be, bias when it comes to you but you're you're not a, you're not a writer though right like you're not writing on well i'll boxing. write i'll write stories yeah. from time to time but when i write i'm i never feel like i'm biased like i'm very like right i'm me you know what i mean like right. i just wrote mm-hmm. something on a manager tim van newhouse and it's like i feel like when i take time <laughs> to write i i don't know it, it's weird because i feel like that um with a lot of the stuff that I I do or some certain people do, mm-hmm. there's a stigma that carries over me where I can do something that's very objective, but people are going mm-hmm. to assume that my personality, that it's non-objective, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's what I think more the issue is. Right. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean... You know, I don't know. I I, just, okay. I don't know. Like I I just know. Like for me, like I just I just know what I have to do and how I've always been taught when it comes to the media. Like, you know, I worked for uh, David Avila for a while, and he was telling me like, you know, don't get close to the media, don't get close to the boxers, and don't get close. And I'm like, what do you mean? Because like half the time I've known these people since we were young, like since we were like 14, 15. And then it's been like, what, 15 years later, I still know them. And so it's really hard for me, but I just know that like when it comes to me reporting or like writing about the fight, I have to be completely unbiased. And so I have to write about the fight and like what happened. And like as much as like cringes me to be like, ah, this sucks, but I have to write about this person and write about their loss. Like it sucks, but at the same time, like in order to, you know, write what actually happened, I have to do that. So maybe that's, what they need, I mean, you know? For me, it's like, look, I came into boxing where I knew, like, I'm kind of like you. I knew more boxers than I do writers or people. Yeah. And it's like more often than not, after a fight at a venue, I'm eating with some of the fighters. I'm yeah. just friends with fighters, right? So if I well, that's the, the problem. But to that, me, that is you gotta choose the one pro- or the other. But see, that isn't the problem for me because I feel like I get respect in the in me being me, yeah. where I can just write what I say because people respect what I say because my word is right. my word. So it's like, I think for some people, the fact that I'm so close with some fighters, whether it's Gabe Flores Jr. or other other fighters, right? I'm I'm getting to be close with the Jones family in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Shout out my guy Roshan Jones, awesome trainer, mm-hmm. right? I could go out and eat dinner. And then if his brother, OJ3, has a tough fight, I could keep it a buck and say, OJ3 had a tough fight. He didn't look too good, and I could go eat dinner with him because I believe the strength of who I am. People respect Mm -hmm. that I'm just going to keep it real, and I'm not going to hate. I'm going to just keep it fact-based. But, see, this is just where what a lot of people see that as a conflict of interest, but I came up in the perspective where I had, none of these media people wanted me to get on. So I had to come up mm-hmm. through the boxing gym. I had to come up through the fighters. So my relationships mm-hmm. are strictly based through fighters. That's I, right, I truth. see. I think, yeah, I mean, so long as you're transparent with other people and that they know, you know, like, oh, it's just his job, but he's cool. Like, you know, like, then I don't think, I don't find an issue with that. Um I see I see your point. 
you know. Well, like, what I don't like is, like, I'll be real. So I'll say, like, someone will say, like, so-and-so looks like crap, right? And I'll be like, I think he's doing good, but I'll keep it real with you. I'm biased. And then someone will go, well, I stopped listening after you said bias. And it's like, fuck you, asshole. It's like, I'm trying to be, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm trying to be real. But, right. Do you, but do so, you get where I'm coming from? I mean, I, yeah, I get what you're coming from because, I mean, I've done that as well, too, where I'll watch a fighter and I'm like, no, you know, like, and it sucks because you still think that, you know, they're, your, your guy's going to win. And, but as long as you know, like, hey, I'm biased with this fighter, meaning, like, I want this person to win. So you're going to see it one, one way or the other. But when you report even- on that. I wouldn't even say, like, like, like the fight that I'm referencing is a kid mm-hmm. won six rounds definitively, right? Just 6-0 shutout. And then right. someone on the internet was kind of like, he looks like crap. And I was like, you know what? This is a fine developmental fight. Like, it's mm-hmm. just a developmental six-rounder or eight-rounder. I forget the number, but it's developmental. It's just a build-you-up mm-hmm. fight, right? Mm-hmm. It looks fine, mm-hmm. but I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm biased. And then the guy says that rude statement. So if I didn't say that I was biased, you would have listened to me. Like, that's what that's what irritates me sometimes about the media. If I'm not honest with you and I don't say that I'm biased, okay, you'll respect what I got to say. But if I include right. that I might be a little biased with my take, but I view it this, well, I'm going to be a fucking asshole to you and say, well, you're biased. And I just think that that's bullshit because it's just like, okay yeah. – you're basically saying you don't want me to be transparent with you. I mean, I guess I would have to see what they say and, like, see it from their point so I would know. But half the time I don't listen to anybody anyway. <laughs> I don't really care what they say. Yeah, I mean, I, I like, to me, like, boxing is pretty irrelevant. So it's, like, I don't really... When people want to be Mr. Media Man in boxing, it's kind of, like, adorable because it's, like, really not that – it's, like, not that important. So, it's, like, I yeah. want to be, like, I think relevant. you're very, like, one of the few people that actually think that way. Yeah, but, I mean, I think I'm right. I mean, everyone like, thinks that they're right. No, but I think that, like, I'm viewing the world more accurately. Like, if this yeah. was football, Adam Schefter – it's like, oh, my God. But, like, the, like you'll get media members where they're, like, scrounging for this story. And right. it's like, I'm going to write a story about this obscure thing. Look, man, I like stories on fighters based on numbers, facts, who they're training with, and that help mm-hmm. develop fighters and get people interested. And I feel that my issue right now with boxing is, People just aren't putting out stuff based around fights. They're just trying to get too cute with shit, do things, everything but develop fighters through media platforms. And it's kind of frustrating. That's just my criticism because, like, all – I didn't want to be in media. Nobody was doing interviews with fighters that I enjoyed at the time. Mm -hmm. So I just started going Mm -hmm. to fights just to ask these fighters. I started going to Andre Ward fights. I was credentialed on a message board of all things. A message board sent me in as media, and they credentialed me for the ward fight. And I started right. asking questions because no one was asking them. I'm like saying, like, I'm just wondering, like, how are you training? What's the day you're training like? Because everyone's asking if you if you win this fight, will you fight Ad- Adonis Stevenson? Who gives a fuck? That's just about his money. That's about a payday. I want to know about right. the greatness aspects. You know, like, what do you? Mm-hmm. Do you chase a chicken around the – like, what are you doing to be so great, Andre? Like, because you're one of – you know what I mean? You're one of the five, ten best fighters of this generation, maybe the best. And it's like we have a bunch of unathletic people asking him questions about what he's going to do next. No fucking athlete thinks about their next accomplishment before they accomplish the first one. It just right. it felt disrespectful and stupid. It's like no one had perspective. And then, like, I a was watching – A lot of people aren't athletes. <laughs> they're not athletes, and, and they've never listen circles back to they've never stepped foot in a boxing ring before. Yet they're sitting here asking questions. I'm a boxer. I'm an, I'm a trainer as well too. Half the time I don't know what to say to these people. I'm like, huh? <laughs> like I just don't. I don't know. I'm just I don't know. I was watching people hit a double. I was watching Andre Ward hit a double end bag before the 
Sergey Kovalev fight. And there were literally people that didn't know what the point of that bag was for. They were mm, literally watching it fun. and going, were going, they were going up to Virgil and all these people, hey, what's this for? And I'm just sitting Shut there and up. thinking, <laughs> I'm dead serious. And these people are have large platforms and are supposed to grow the sport. Yeah. And That's Andre you, Ward, like even even being in the media, I was just like, oh, this is like really funny to me. Just being in the media, being a boxer, and then also training, like I just got almost full perspective of like the boxing world. But like um, a lot of people in the media, I remember having arguments with this one chick. I was like, wait, it, hang on. I like had to stop her. I was like, I forget who I'm talking to. Somebody that's a wannabe media fan that thinks that they know boxing, yet they've never set foot in a boxing ring before. Like I had to remind myself, like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about when it comes to boxing. Like she might know stats. Like or whatever, you know, this person might know that they might know names, but they don't know shit about boxing because they've never stepped foot in a boxing ring before. I, well, I feel like a lot of boxing media is like memorization of like history and like yeah, people and like people accomplishing things. But there's not a lot of like breaking down fights. Like you just hear things like he's got a good jab, he's gonna use his jab. But there's very little nuance, like Steve Edwards J Rock's trainer has a boxing scene column. There's some cool insight there because it's just at least different and different thoughts. But there's not a lot of like tactical thought ever provided. And it's like with sports like football, you got Monday morning quarterback with Peter King. With the NBA, you've got people actually breaking down schemes and dynamics. With boxing, we got right. people gossiping like like kids in high school about people's financial matters right like that's really what we get for our technical analysis we don't ever get like i'll give you an example and then i'll shut up and let you talk i mean i'm just hogging all this but i'm on a rant when johnny no, go gonzalez ahead. knocked out abner morris it was one of the most beautiful technical displays ever it was a jab he drew his hand Mares dropped his hand, and then he fainted the jab and came over the top with a left hook, right? I didn't hear mm -hmm. one person after that telecast in their story accurately break down that punch. And it's like that for a historical document from a major media outlet, it would have been great to have that broken down because then you could have just had that in text, and then someone, when we're all dead, could just read that and understand what happened. And that sums up the issue I have with kind of boxing and why I don't value boxing reporting that much because it's just like, I'm like PYB. I have a doctorate. I do other shit like these people. It's like, I go there not say these people, but it's like, it, it's like, it's just fun and games to me because it's like, it's so, right. it's like not a joke, but it's, it's close to a joke. I care about the right. fighters, but like, these dudes are competing about male attention, about shit they don't understand. It's goofy. Cool. Right. Well, that's why, I mean, I think, um, I think a lot of the times when people are sending out, you know, the people that are in the credentials, like Golden Boy and Top Rank, um, this, they should really be paying attention to a lot of the media's content and like kind of do like their background on this person and like you know what I mean because then you're getting good quality media content not just Joe Blow off the street that just loves boxing so much that wants to all of a sudden be a boxing page like I think they should really look into the history of everything you know it's like applying for a job <laughs> it's like a job application you know they should have some type of you have to have some type of experience it can't just because be because oh I like boxing so much. I'm going to create a, a, you know, boxing only fan and get 12,000 followers. Now I'm in the media and it's just like a bunch of crap, really. So. Yeah. I mean, I think that the frustration I have is like a modern world frustration where it's like the big issue I have with the modern world is quality goes to the wayside for views. So someone could mm -hmm. provide very low quality content, but if a lot of people just want to click on it because it's like they could instigate a fight between Ryan Garcia and Raleigh or they could yeah. find two fighters that are going to bicker, 
Well, then yeah. a bunch of people are going to just tune into that because <laughs> there's a lot of people in boxing that came into well, boxing reality for show. the drama. Exactly. It's so a, it's yeah. like, yeah. how do you balance out the person that's going to get a lot of views to your promotion based off foolishness to someone who might get less views, but it's a better time capsule for history? Well, like I said, I mean, I think I've talked about this before. We've talked about this before where there's a lot of fighters out there that people don't know about. And the reason why they don't know about them is, you know, one, it's the fighter's fault. But two, it also has a lot to do with the media. Like, you know, um, how are these people getting exposed to the outside boxing world? Everyone's sitting there focused on the main fighter, the the main event, or, you know, the most popular person within that promotion, but then they forget about the ones, you know, below them or the ones that aren't getting so much attention, the ones that are sitting off to the side. I've been to so many, you know, uh, boxing events where there's a really good fighter that no one is talking to and the guy is off to the side. And I'll walk up to them and be like, hey, like, you know, and start up a conversation because no one else is talking to them. But it's like, just like how you said, you're going to have so much, uh, you know, content about these fighters that are going to come up. I think of, I mean, you can't really tell people what to do, so um, you can't really tell them what to report on either. So it just depends, you know. I don't really know how to answer that question. It's just, I think if people are smart, they would, you know, reach out to the people that aren't getting the most attention and, you know, venture out. Don't just go to all the same media, you know, uh, media events for the same fighter that everybody else is reporting on. Go report on other things. Do the actual work. That's what journalism is all about. Like I said, a lot of people that are in the boxing media, they're not journalists. They don't even have the experience. They don't know what the hell they're talking about, <laughs> you know. So, of course, they're not going to, you know, do the hard work. They just created a fan page, you know, and now all of a sudden they're the boxing media. That's how it works. That's why I think it's all political. It's all crap, just like we said. So we agree. <laughs> no, and that's why we do this. But it's like for me, it's like, and what I get frustrated with is some, I'm like you. Like, I – if this corona gets through, I'd love to come down to Southern California and go to a club show and hang out with you, and we could figure out how to make, like, a video or something fun out of our experience, but, like, that would be, like, a dream scenario. Most people go, well, why wouldn't you want to go to a big show? It's just, I love club shows. I love the small shows. Yeah, (laughs) those are my favorite. I reach out to, uh, there's so many people, like, all, you know, the matchmakers and stuff, they're like, Tara, come to our show. I'm like, heck yeah. And it's oh, usually only me that's at the shows that's doing media coverage. But I love it. I have so much fun. I love the smaller shows. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I like, what I'm scared about now is with these smaller shows, are they going to go to the wayside now? Like with, <clears throat> with corona, with the financial burdens, with them being small, like how many of these little OC Fight Club, or I guess OC Fight Club's a little bit bigger, but Red Promotion, these smaller shows, All Star Boxing, how many of yeah. these shows can continuously put on the fights every two months that they were doing when they're the person? I, I think they're going to pick back up again. I think they're going to be a lot more, like I said, a lot more resilient. And if they are smart right now, like this is, I, I feel like this would be like the best thing for matchmakers right now. If any matchmakers are ever going to listen to this, this is what you should do. Sit down, get out a big, huge piece of paper and like put down, you know, OC fight club right in the middle and just figure out main points of what we're going to do and have shows already lined up. But let's just say you're waiting for July for – Let's just say that, you know, the country does back does open it back up in July. Okay, great. We have uh, one, two, three, four, four different fights. Friday, you know, the next week, Friday, the next week, Friday, like every single Friday of that month. So that's four shows that are on for July. And then you have June, July, August, and September set up. So you're going to have three months straight. That's, what, four times three is 12. So you're already going to have 12 events, you know, set up, okay? So you have all the fights set up, and you let the boxers know, let the coaches know, okay, if the country does not open back up, let's just say it doesn't open up in July, we're going to push it till August and let the people know for August it's going to be pushed till September and just push it back, push it back, you know, but already have that map and already have like a plan out for it for every single weekend to have fights that are going on. If they are smart, like they would just, you know, they would kind of stay 10 steps ahead of the game and already have a roadmap for 
their plan of like what's going to go on because you never know it could already open back up in June I know that Los Angeles County is uh, closed until May 15th so um, you might not I don't know a whole nother month from now but what if we open back up in June 1st what are they going to do now they wasted two months of not preparing for you know fights to be open I think if they were smart they would be you know sitting down business masks road maps and letting the coaches know or whoever they you know the matchmakers whoever they sit down and you know bring these fighters and let them know be prepared for june 5th be prepared for june 12th be prepared for june 19th and let them know okay if it doesn't open in june it goes down to july it, everything just gets pushed back and just send them like you know monthly updates like this is what's going on that way it gets the fighters you know prepared now moves on to the fighters your job is to keep doing your road work, you know, your road work, keep doing your work in the gyms. If you can go to a gym, you know, or buy heavy bags with 200 bucks, you could do your training outside. Your coach can come wear a mask, wear what he needs to wear, you know, and he could still coach you. Like there's, you can do for boxing. The great thing about boxing is you could do so much with little equipment. And people think that, Oh, I need this. I need this. I need that. No, you can get a jump rope for $2, go, go buy a heavy bag or, you know, go use, something that you can use or like I don't know like a, a pound of flour or something or dirt or create something you know or use a tire for crying out loud go find something you can use as a heavy bag and then you know get your trainer get someone to hold mitts for you get someone to work with you find someone that could spar with you you don't need this big old gym with all these other people but keep training I think that's the most important part for boxers so when June you know June 5th comes along I'll start boxing I have a fight June 5th you know be prepared be ready at all times that's for boxers, for promoters, and during this time right now, you know, for the smaller events, I think that's all they really have because they don't have stuff like ESPN or Top Rank. But, um, you know, top like I said, Top Rank is on top of it. They're already, you know, they're keeping boxing alive by showing all these <clears throat> old, you know, trilogies or, you know, boxing and whatnot. So I don't know. I just, I think boxing will be pretty resilient, but just people have to be smart about it and be business-minded to, you know, stay in it. If you're not going to be business-minded, especially with media as well, too, if you're not going to be business-minded and be 10 steps ahead and be on the constant, yeah, you're going to fail. Boxing will fail, but I don't think it will. Um, yeah, knowing boxers, knowing how we operate and how our mind works, there's a lot of people out there that are doing what they need to do and using this time positively instead of just thinking like, oh, you know, country's out or, oh, I'm just going to stay in my house. Like, no, you know, am I just talking to myself or – no, you're you're. We're both going on rants because I think we're a little stir <laughs> crazy. But it's like, I think that what's going to happen is with, there's going to be something called like the new normal, right? That we're going to readjust to after this pandemic. But I think in the new normal, it's also like going to be days of like a lot of media members getting to go to fights for free or gone. It's going to be only vital and media members that need to be there for the foreseeable future like for a year or two. And then a lot, I wonder if a lot of these people, I mean, home, yeah. like if you, well, I hope to, not. but like what I'm saying is like, say you're like a mid-level media member, maybe like I, mm -hmm. hopefully we fit into that, like mid-level. We're not top tier, but we're definitely not at the bottom either. We're like right in the middle and you you can't quite get in the big shows anymore. We're, how many of those like people in that situation would be humble enough to go to club shows? Like you and me love club shows, but is there a group of people? Because like you and me are the rare people that go to club shows. There's like you know one what? Or two I others. hope that happens. I hope that really does happen. Because if that does happen, and then you get people like you and I that do go to club shows, it's gonna show who really has a passion for boxing, who really likes boxing. You know what I mean? If you can't go to these these small shows which I think they're great shows they're amazing shows then you don't really freaking like boxing anyways you're just there for oh look at me like I got to meet Tyson Curry no one gives a shit <laughs> I don't give a shit <laughs> like you know well, like, I remember huh? I went to Superfly 3 and my friend Bruno Escalante fought and he lost a close fight and it was just it was a fight where it could have gone either way you know what I mean it was like a it was just a really close fight, and he lost to this guy named Alexander Marin. Good kid, tough fighter. Um, all credit to him, right? But uh, he was the last fight before the pay-per-view card, and I went only to see him. And I remember when I was leaving, 
there were a lot of people just arriving and it was blowing mm-hmm. their mind that I wasn't staying for the main card. And I'm like, guys, I don't care about the next three fights. I came to see my friend yeah. and support him. And they're like, but it's the HBO card. And I'm like, I don't train or hang out with that guy who's on the next three fights. Like, the next three fights are on HBO. At any point in my life, I can watch them. I'm driving five hours from Inglewood to the Bay Area. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need mm-hmm. to. I left at 6. I got home at 11. If I leave at 9, I get home at 3 in the morning. You know what I mean? Right. It's a big difference. So, yeah. but I, that's so you watch it on me. HBO. So what? Yeah, it's like, so what? But I want to see my friend fight live. But it struck me as crazy as my friend was in the most competitive fight of that evening. It was the mm-hmm. fight before the HBO telecast. And a large portion of the media didn't even show up. And I'm just thinking, mm-hmm. like, part of your job is just to, like, in my opinion, to be a media member, and now I'm just, like, a hater, is to watch the undercard fights and assess talent and to be able to make mm-hmm. observations to people that look at you and say, wow, this person, this man or woman that fights is good Mm -hmm. and and I should keep an eye out for them because I work a nine to five and I don't get to watch all these fights but they say they're good I'm going to look for them Mm -hmm. yeah Um, well maybe they're saying the same same thing about you (laughs) part of your your job is to watch these main events you know I'm but a Libra, I, so I look at things both ways. <laughs> I'm a Libra, too. <laughs> That's another thing we have in common, I'm just saying. But um, what's it called? Like, for that fight, though, I made clear on the credential. I was like, I'm only reporting for one fight. Yeah. Okay, you even sent that in. I said, like, I'm only reporting one fight. I'm here for this fight. Yeah, and I went in a Hawaiian, I went in a Hawaiian shirt. And uh, track pants. <laughs> That's funny. Kind, kind of dad swag. I was like a dad, total dad outfit. So, <laughs> um, I don't know, man. It just to me, I really feel like the promoters are getting better at promoting fights, but the content distribution. And I'm sure I'm to fault for this, and I'm trying my best over this quarantine to provide people with original interviews and conversations and talking pieces. But, man, like, something in boxing, it's hard to get content that really resonates with people. And it's weird because it's like all these Pulitzer Prizing articles I grew up reading were always around boxing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did I break the terror robot? I'm just thinking. <laughs> Um, I feel like I just get on like this rant and then I'm like, hmm, hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess like we'll see. It'll be interesting. I don't yeah, know. I mean, life is life is fun. Isn't this fun though? Like the not knowing. I think it's I so mean, much fun. <laughs> for me, it isn't because I'm a very structured person, and it's like, so I'm trying to start like a golf. YouTube channel right now and like I'm working on writing stories and all different types of stuff I'm doing like literally like six hours of podcast interviews in like two days and it's just it would be nice to know when I could have some uh, when we could enter into phase one or phase two of opening up the economy because then it's like I could like you and me can keep doing our show, but I don't have to do four hours of interviews a day to not go crazy. You know, it's like I'm right. It, it would be nice to pace that out. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's well, where I'm at right now. Now you just kind of have to. So you're gonna have to do four or five hours of, you know, podcasts and social media and just stay on top of it and then you're already going to have that traction so it'll just be easier and you'll keep that traction flowing and then you then you add all the boxing events and you're going to be even crazier busy you know when boxing yeah, comes I mean, back up. It's, well when boxing starts back up it's going to be overwhelming because I think that we're going to be getting fight like I think we might see two to three fight cards a week
I think two, three cards. They already have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays. <laughs> but I'm saying, you like, know? I think we see, like, a Golden Boy, a Dazon, and a PBC, and a Top Rank all in a week. Golden all Boy. In the same week. Yeah, Golden Boy should be Thursday night. Dazon could be Friday. Add PBC to the mix. Top Rank could be Saturdays. Who usually goes on Sundays? There's no a big, one yet. But there no, be. there's a big fight card that does Sundays. I've been to a couple events that are on Sundays. Oh, that's um, the Tom Loeffler, the 360. Oh, yeah. He's pretty good. I like his fights. His fights are fun. What is it about his fights that you enjoy? You know what? I'm about people. How you're being treated at the um at the promotion how do people treat you like that's kind of how it is for me um but i like this fight yeah everyone's pretty nice there um they treat the media pretty well so i don't ever really have issues with 360 um i think golden boy no does golden boy do the same because they're usually in hollywood right for 360 yeah at the avalon doesn't um, Golden Boy do Avalon as well, too? Or am I getting them mixed up? They oh, have no, done actually... the Avalon, but they do the Belasco more. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're at Belasco Theater. Belasco's They're fun, cool. too. That's the one I like for Golden Boy. Um, <sighs> I don't know. They're going to on this podcast for 40 minutes. Not a world record yet. So what are your final thoughts? Because now I'm I'm getting all these messages and the world's going crazy and I love spending time with you and talking with you. I feel like the, the one blessing, one of the many blessings of the quarantine is um I got I get to know you better. And that when we bounce out we're gonna have a stronger friendship in some capacity and that you're a great person, you know, and Yeah, just make that, sure everyone knows how crazy I am. Well, I think you can. I think you can cover that. But I, I really would like to be sincere and say that you're, you're someone that coming out of this quarantine, you've been nothing but genuine with me. You've been uh, someone who's extremely supportive when I have anxiety, and you've been very helpful and kind. And I really appreciate getting to know you over these weeks. And I really enjoy this podcast. And maybe when the quarantine's over, we'll continue this podcast if I don't annoy you where we can actually talk about some fights. But I think it's getting to the point where we, maybe next week we'll, um, you can pick a fight or we'll pick a fight topic and we'll examine it. Because I think that the way you look at situations are much more interesting than a lot of people. And I think we should take advantage of our perspectives in the fight game. Yeah, let's do it. Give me some okay. homework to do because I usually just work all day and then, I, like, pick up a book or something. I'm not really picking up boxing right now, but I just gave myself a really good idea from this podcast. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, like, I mean, I kind of just, like, taught myself something. I was just like, wait a minute, where did that come from? But, I mean, that's kind of something that I'm going to do is just kind of figure out a roadmap for when it comes down to boxing. Because I do want to be one of those people where I could shoot out, you know, sit here and be like, oh, Muhammad Ali in 1975. <laughs> that's <laughs> your this. goal. Yes, because I wanted, like, I know what I'm talking about. I just don't know names and numbers. Like, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, you could tell oh, me, I like, oh, Teal female. I'm like, who? Oh, yeah, that guy. I'd be like, okay. But I don't, like, I'm not sitting here, like, dreaming about him and researching him. I don't know jack shit about him. I'm sure he's a great person, but it's nothing personal. It's just I just don't sit here and keep these people's stats and like their names and their numbers in my head like that's just one thing but I do want to get good at that so like I said I was going to write a roadmap for myself when it comes to boxing so I'll be more knowledgeable in that area so yeah okay anyone wants some business business idea Um, they can follow me on just say PYB and do we get to know what PYB is nope I'll give you your fourth clue. Your fourth clue is it stands for something. <laughs> it's three letters and it stands for something. P Y B. Come on. That's such ask, a passive ask, aggressive, like. No, it is not. Ask people it in stands for something. What, what they think P 
TYB stands for, and they give them the clue, Michael Jackson. People will figure it out. I can't believe you haven't figured it out. Is it pretty young? BB. Wow. <laughs> what can the B be? Really? What do you think B stands for? I don't oh know. Gosh. What have we been talking about this whole podcast? Boxing? Yeah, we've been talking about boxing. So what do you think so the QID pretty, stands for? Pretty young boxer? There you go. You figured it out. I got it? Yes. <laughs> That's why I said just say TYB. Say my name. Do you know the song? Say my name. Say my name. <laughs> I know. When someone threatened me, that, that was my insult back to him. I said, just do like the song said. Say my name. It's say funny. my name. When no one <laughs> is around you. <laughs> Oh, man, I can't believe it took you four episodes to figure that out. Well, I am kind of unbelievable. So I, for me, <laughs> I think I've often been told I'm unbelievable. I've been told I'm incredible, and I've been told I'm different. So I don't see that as a um, different thing. <laughs> but it's a good quality. I, I appreciate you, and I look forward to to us doing another episode. I think this is our strongest episode. I think we're hitting we're hitting the sweet spot. We're getting there. We're getting there. Figure out, let me know, you know, via text, whatever. Figure out what our next combo is going to be about, and I'll do my research. I think. Or at I least have some more time to ponder. <clears throat> one thing that comes to my mind is the top five worst hairlines in boxing. What? That's like, okay, hang on. Let me put you back on. That's just like saying, oh, I don't want to talk about pop culture and who likes who and this and that. Okay, no one gives a shit about hairlines. I'm having a day As, a, right as a balding man, I care about hairlines. <laughs> yeah, but that's just like gossip. That's not like boxing. Can we sing that song as the outro? Say my name, say my name. <laughs> And no one knows you. Say maybe I love you. I don't do karaoke. <laughs> How does that song go? I don't know. I just know say my name. And then I say just say PYB. Come on. P Y B right, over and out. Pretty pretty young baseball player. How did, so that is pretty young negative. Boxer. Negative, negative Nancy. Well, I'm going to be so mad one day when you hit me with a jab and I'm going to cry because it hurts. I would never. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I'll talk to you soon, and I appreciate you. All right. Talk to you next week. Later. For more great shows, please go to iTunes or wherever podcasts are found and leave us a review.